All right, welcome to CIVI 381 Laboratory. Um, today we'll be going over the compaction lab. Uh, the purpose of this lab is to investigate the compaction characteristics of soil. That includes the optimum dry density and the optimum uh, moisture content at which that density occurs. We'll be doing both the standard and the modified proctors. Before we get started, just a safety note, in any standard industry lab, you'll be wearing steel toe boots and safety goggles. Before the test begins, estimates for the water content and the soil specific gravity must be obtained. The specific gravity of soil is measured using a special test that involves boiling and other specific steps. Uh, and this is outside the scope of our CIVI 381 course. Therefore, our laboratory technician conducts this test for your use and provides the value of the soil specific gravity to you. Uh, the technician also provides you with an initial estimate of the soil's initial water content. And for subsequent compaction tests, increase the water content by approximately two and a half percent. All right, we're gonna be doing a modified proctor. We're gonna be using a soil sample that's around 5% moisture content. We're gonna take it out of the bag, dump it into a pan. And we're going to pass it through a number four sieve to get rid of all the oversize. All right, so before you start the test, you want to make sure that you measure, we weigh the mass of the, of the mold without the collar on. Make sure you do that. When you're ready, put the collar on. And the whole idea is we're going to be filling the proctor, or the proctor mold up to this line. Um, with the modified proctor, it'll be five layers, and you're gonna be compacting each layer 25 times. When you put a layer of soil in, make sure that it's slightly above one-fifth of the mold, because when you compact it, it's gonna lose volume. So we'll get going here. We will put in about one-fifth of the mold full of soil. Now the proper compaction technique is to, when you use your hammer, you wanna go around in circles around the rim of the proctor evenly, as well as you wanna hit the middle to make sure you're getting an even distribution of uh, compaction effort. To compact the soil, the hammer must be properly placed before releasing. The first few blows of the hammer should be applied in a systematic manner to ensure the most efficient compaction and maximum re reproducibility of results. The, se the sequence shown in the slide must be followed for the first four blows, then the hammer should be moved progressively around the edge of the mold between successive blows as shown in the slide, so that the blows are uniformly distributed over the entire area. The last layer should be compacted such that, such that the compacted surface is about six millimeters above the top level of the mold. All right, to start, I like to do a pound here, a pound here, here and here, it's four of them, and then go continuously around and hit the middle every once in a while. So we'll get started. And you end up repeating this five more, or four more times for a total of five layers. All right, so we've done all five layers. Now we're gonna remove the collar of the proctor. And we're going to strike the soil to be flush with the proctor uh, mold. Thank you. 
Now we're going to take a brush, just clean off the mold. And then we're going to go measure the mass. Now to extrude uh, the sample from the mold, we're going to undo the mold from the base, just like that, and toss it into a jack. Once the sample has been compacted and the soil and mold have been weighed, the soil that has been tested must be subjected to one final test to determine its final moisture content. We do that by removing the soil sample from the base plate, then, you, then we must determine the wet mass of the soil and moisture tin. The soil, still in the tin, is then placed into a drying oven and left overnight to dry at 110 C. The next day, the mass of the, of the dry soil and tin are recorded. With this data, we can now calculate the final moisture content of the soil. Recall that the moisture content is the ratio of the mass of water to the mass of solids. If we express the mass of water as the total mass minus the solids mass, then we can calculate the moisture content using the expression on the screen. All right, so now it's time to grab a moisture sample. We want to get a representative moisture sample of, of, the, of the proctor sample, so we want to grab a couple grams from here, a couple grams from this end, and a couple grams from the middle here. And we'll toss it in the moisture tin. Make sure you weigh this beforehand as well. Go ahead and weigh this and toss it in the oven to let it dry. All right, so that really concludes the test for one data point, but of course we want more, so we we're able to get that compaction curve. So we're going to break up our sample, and then we're gonna add the predetermined amount of water to bring up the moisture content by about two and a half percent, pass it through number four sieve again, and repeat the whole process. Take the water, pour it in, and give it a good thorough mix. All right, so that's the end of the lab. Uh, be sure to conduct enough data points so that the mass is actually dropping uh, in the proctor sample. That'll give you a good indication that the compaction curve is actually a curve, not just a, a line, a straight line. Um, make sure that you don't forget to weigh your moisture samples. Some people tend to forget them in the oven. And the proctor mold is a standardized 944 cubic centimeters, so that should be able to help you with your density calculation and the specific gravity of the silt is 2.65. Uh, thank you, and have a good day. So now that we have all of our data, we want to express our data as a proctor curve, and we'll discuss the calculations and the equations you're going to need. So first off, we're going to want to calculate our, our density, and that's, everyone knows, it's your mass divided by your volume. The mass we collect from the weight recordings during your test, and your Volume will simply be 944 cubic centimeters. That is the standardized volume of the proctor mold. Your moisture content, uh, as discussed on the previous screen, is simply the um, mass of water divided by your mass of solids. It's the ratio between them two. So you can take your total mass and subtract the mass of solids. That's your mass of water, just to simplify things. 
And then your dry density is simply your wet density divided by one plus your moisture content. And with all this data, we can express the Proctor curves in terms of moisture content and dry density, as we can see on the right hand side of the screen. In this example, we have our modified and standard proctors. The standard proctor will be more wet and less dense than the modified proctor because there's less compactive effort being applied to the soil. Another point of interest in our proctor curves is we want to compare them to air void lines. So the first equation on the screen here uh, will show how to collect, how to calculate dry density in terms of your air voids. Um, and you'll also need to know your specific gravity and your moisture content. So once you plot this on your dry density and moisture content curve, you can actually compare it to um, your, your proctor curves. So in this case, on the right hand side, we have in yellow, we have 0% air voids. So that would be a 100% saturated sample. And then in gray, we have 10% air voids. So as we can see, our optimum densities for both standard and modified lie somewhere in between those curves. And it also shows that our sample is not 100% saturated. And then the last two equations are just a reminder that your density of water is um, 1000 kilograms per cubic meter and a reminder on how to calculate your moisture content.